Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 5, Thoughts. This episode is called 4,722 Hours. Another episode I love. Possibly my favorite episode of this show so far. Uh, the uh, Right, yes, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. No spoilers in this video for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. And then there's some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. And yeah, let's dive right in. So... I gotta say, the the fact that this actually, like, on paper, this should be, like, one of my least favorite episodes of the show so far. You know, it, it really, it barely features, you know, to be clear, Gemma is one of my favorite characters, but... Usually, what you know, what I like about so many of the other episodes is the interplay between characters that I love and care about. And this, you know, we meet Will, and there's some great interplay between Gemma and Will. But that's it. Other than that, you know, the the first chunk of the episode is a one woman show. Very very impressive that, you know, it it gets me and many others so engaged. And the, you know, yeah, the, the, it doesn't have like espionage stuff, you know, it has, it has science, it has exploration, it has like tension and such, but you know, no one's trying, you know, well, the part where she pretends she was poisoned or something, that felt like a, a very spy kind of thing, but yeah, it's a it's a very unusual episode. Like it's it's essentially like if if it feels like an episode of a very dark Star Trek show or something, which I don't know, maybe New Trek is. I stopped watching Star Trek when I got done watching Star Trek Enterprise, the the 2001-2005 show. Yeah, um the the um, yeah, you know, it doesn't it doesn't progress the inhuman storyline. We don't learn anything new about Shield or Hydra. Yeah. Like on paper should easily be my least favorite episode and yet it is yeah, it's probably my favorite so far. It's it's incredible. And yeah, so we you know, we go right back to her being sucked into the portal. You know, we we do get that brief little adorable bit about, you know, him trying to make it clear he's trying to ask her out. You know, it's not just, you know, so I presume within the coming future you intend to in ingest something nutritious? You know, no, no, it's like, um, so I was thinking the two of us could go somewhere and eat together that that might be nice you know and it's just so so adorable but yeah um you know we see her pull through spat back out and then we see the portal close and she's like no 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 and tries to dig through the sand just holy crap like for right away we really feel how d demoralizing the situation is and we have the, yeah, and the, the hour count starts. I really love that they, they, you know, I mean, once you see the, the episode title, you, you know, okay, you know, she's going to be on this plan for quite some time. And we already, like, we've seen her arrive back on Earth, so we already know, but just the, the, yeah, the, the counter appearing, and, and I think it does start, yeah, yeah, be, you know, it doesn't start at, at one, it starts almost immediately after, she, you know, basically, as soon as she's accepted, we're, you know, this is it, I'm, I'm stuck here for the time being, you know, then the, the hour counter starts, and just, yeah, 
I I quite like that she's you know she's she's checking okay so the the air is ox oxygenated and gravity seems to be slightly more powerful or maybe I'm just tired mm, no, I think it's gravity and these various things and you know she's recording observations being a good scientist on the on the smartphone and then the the count went to 13 hours okay I I'm pretty devoted to the show but if it puts on a Michael Bay movie I'm not gonna keep watching and yeah the the um, the bit where she realizes you know the the sun just is not rising you know we have this this bit of like Ah, crap. See, let's, it's, it's not technically a montage. I think it's more of a, like... <laughs> crap. I forget what it's called, but, like, time is passing, but the camera is, you know, remaining static. And... Let's see... Yeah, and, and to keep her spirits high, she's thinking about the date you know the, the and pointing out I hope we don't run out of things to talk about that would be for the first time ever that would be the one that would be terrible and it just yeah and yeah the part where you know she she collapses and then when she wakes up she's almost entirely covered in sand just really off-putting and Let's see, yeah, and she, she gets water, and there's, like, a laugh, and it starts out as this, like, relief, but then it gets to, like, this sort of, like, bitter, sad laugh kind of thing. Really solid acting. Like, Elizabeth Henstridge carries so much of this episode entirely on her shoulders. Really, really incredibly talented. And, you know, yeah, she finally got water. She... She got it just in time, too. I gotta say, a hundred hours. I always heard it was three three days, but a hundred hours. It's almost like five days. Anyway, but but yeah, you know, she, and she's she's in the water. She's, you know, enjoying that she finally has access to, to water again. And then she's attacked. Like, as just, yeah. You know, the... the it's like the planet is always every, every every little glimmer of hope has to be destroyed there has to be something terrible and yeah you know this this thing that lives in the water it eats the the beings that come to, to that that go into the water for water you know there's a there's a number of things here on earth that you know it also kind of reminds me of like a Venus flytrap kind of thing, you know. It's yeah, it's it's luring you in with something that you need, and and then attacks, and yeah, you know, she manages to to kill the thing, and then struggles through eating it, and just and it's the, the, the yeah, you know, water extremely important. You you're gonna you know you will perish if you don't get access to water. But you are also going to need food, you know, and as as nasty as it is, you know, like, you know, the, the one thing I was thinking was, you know, she, she better hope that it's not, like, poisonous to her. But that's really the only, you know, and let's see, then we, yeah, and, you know, after a while, she's hungry for more food. So she goes back into the water on purpose. And it's, yeah, you know, that's the kind of thing that you might have to do if you are in this, you know, not on an alien planet, but in, you know, yeah, in a re really isolated place. And, yeah, you know, she, she makes a fire and she cooks the creature and now looks substantially less upset about eating it, which, yeah, that's, yeah, makes a huge difference. And, you know, she burps and laughs, and she's like, ah, oh, Fitz, you'd be so proud of me. I killed the thing, I cooked it, I burped, 
I wish you were here. Actually, scratch that. I don't wish this upon anyone. Except Grant. And then we have the... Let's see... Yeah. Gotta say, the, the trap with the noise. Very clever, Will. Very nicely done. And yeah, like, every so often, they're probably... You know... I can I can imagine there might go you know you you might get a some some animal in in there that that he can then eat and yeah of course he's he's really you know like like when when he says to her you're still here like to her and to the audience it sounds like what do you mean did you think she was gonna teleport out of there do you think she has a gaseous form what are you talking about? But, you know, you come to realize he's been there for 14 years. He thinks that he hallucinated her. And, you know, basically, like, he thinks that 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 it's not a, a person. He thinks it's the thing that's, you know, and, and that he, that, that it's driving him mad the way it drove the the astronauts mad and let's see then we have the um, yeah I I gotta say the her faking having been poisoned is very very clever you know it is the kind of thing of like yeah you know if there is if he has any empathy in him then before he stops and says, wait, I didn't poison her, you know, he's, he's going to be like, oh no, maybe she's allergic to something that's in the food or something, you know, I better save her. I gotta say, I was a little surprised that she didn't, like, try to, I, I was thinking she was going to lock him in the cage. Let's see, and, you know, you're definitely real, yeah. And, yeah, he points out, you know, the thing smells blood. And he said, you know, out there is death. Which, you know, the, the thing that the, what's it called? The, um, the, the symbol warned about. And, <laughs> you know, she asks, do you have any you know, any alcohol, I'll just run down to the drugstore and get you some. Would you? See, portal survivors who snark together, stay together. And, let's see, the, um, yeah, so, you know, he explains, you know, I got, you know, when, yeah, how did, how did, you know, when did you get here? 2001. I mean, I wish I was surprised that Stanley Kubrick sent a, an actor to another planet, but honestly, I, yeah, I 100% I believe it. And I like that, you know, oh, there's, you know, oh, the, the color and the, the heat. Oh, yeah, there's the, was it the, the yeah, I forget what the, the words he used, but you know, yeah, the thing, uh, oh, yeah, it's a, there's a luminescent substrata below us, it's a natural source of heat, keeps the planet warm without sunlight, and she points out, that sounds very sciencey of you, and then he says, I think it's the fires of hell, which, yeah, that sounds more like the, the will we'd met up to that point. I, I gotta say, the fact that Gemma at no point in this episode tried to cheer him up, give him hope by saying where there's a will, there's a way, must have taken a lot of restraint on her part. Seriously, props. I wouldn't have been able to do it. And, uh, yeah, you know, she, she asks what happened to the others, and he says, it. Yeah, they were no match for Pennywise. And, yeah, you know, he's, th they talk about the foods that they, they miss. And, you know, 
what what are the what do they miss most that isn't food? He says the sun, and she says Fitz, and he's like, yeah, I. He Fitz is your favorite word, and let's see, yeah, and and they talk about the the no fly zone, and. Yeah, he asks her, where are you going? And she's like, looks like I'm going nowhere. And... Yeah, um... I really appreciate that we don't get... We... <laughs> when we see the... I guess I'll call it it. When we see it... we don't see like a, a clear face you know there's there's like a you know some of the, one of the times we see it we just can't make out what's you know the the head another time it's it's got like a, an astronaut's helmet on you know i really appreciate that i think that was the exact right choice for that uh, yeah and yeah he knew that there was evidence of other people and didn't tell her because he knew that she would want to check it out and he was worried about her. And yeah, she manages to predict where the portal will be when very clever and I really like, you know, it's, there's a lot of good science on the show and yeah, the idea that the, the moon affects whether or not the portal is open the way that Earth's moon affects the tides you know very clever very yeah and and it's that thing of you know to to human beings it seems random but that's because it doesn't go with you know you can't say oh every let's say 300 hours or something because the that doesn't necessarily line up with the way time moves on the planet you know so f from an earth perspective it looks random but from the planet if you're on the planet you can predict you know very nicely done that is you know hypothetically accurate it's you know we we haven't we haven't been able to put human beings on a planet outside of our solar system. So we can't know for sure, but hypothetically, that is exactly how that sort of thing would work. And then we have, um, yeah, a montage of them building as the, the hour counter, you know, quickly speeds through. Did you think I was building you a helicopter? Kind of, yeah. And, yeah, it is 100 meters. It is not at all just 30 meters. And, yeah, they they kiss, and it's, yeah, they, they have sex, which, you know, it's one of those things where that kind of situation can really create a bond in much shorter time than would happen normally. And we see the flare and Gemma manages to to get you know to to where Fitz is but Will is still on the planet. And the portal closes and yeah, you know, she what she predicted was 18 years, so, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't quite know what they're, what they're gonna do, because they do seem dead set on, you know, retrieving him, but, but yeah, you know, and yeah, once she's explained this whole thing to, to, to Fitz, you know, he, he storms off, and she's like, please, you have to listen to me. And then he's like, oh, I, no, I agree. We're going to get him back. Right, I, I could have just said that instead of stomping off like a 
jealous ex or something. Huh. I, I really could have thought that through. That was a bit of forced tension. Sorry about that, Gemma. But yeah, the the really looking forward to, to seeing the follow through. This this was a solid episode. They really did a phenomenal job on because this this is the kind of thing that really like if people got bored during the course of this episode, that is a potential loss of a lot of viewers. You know, the the like based on the ending, I would be very surprised if there are more episodes, at least this season, that are like where where a huge chunk of it is set on the the planet. But if you tap out like halfway through or something, yeah, you might be left thinking that there's gonna be multiple episodes like this, or maybe you just you know lose interest. But yeah, fantastic. I thought the it was very cute the the um, birthday video that they made for Gemma and that she watched multiple times and yes so the IMDb trivia for this episode so the names of Will Daniels deceased crewmates are those of other fictional astronauts Austin is named for Steve Austin from the six million dollar man Brubaker is named for Charles Brubaker from Capricorn one and Taylor is named for George Taylor from Planet of the Apes 1968 the number of hours in the title 4722 is equivalent to six and a half months the episode was named one of the best television episodes of 2015 by the Atlantic of the entire year. Yeah, I agree. The majority of the episode was filmed in a work quarry in Simi Valley and in Northridge, Los Angeles, near the Mojave Desert during the day. Makes a lot of sense. Henstrich was named TV Lines Performer of the Week for the week of October 25th, 2015, for performance in this episode, particularly for appearing throughout the whole of it, and for the more heartbreaking scenes near the end. In June 2016, IGN ranked the episode as the best in the series. Wow. Yeah, I 100% see how. And see. Um, oh, phew, yeah. Um, both the episode title and Jemison's quote. Um, 4,722 hours. Seem to continue a tendency of inserting the number 47. This time, 4.7. ABC even promoted the new series Wicked City 2015 during the commercial break of 13 minutes by flashing a neon sign saying, In 47 minutes. And see. Right, and yeah, SOS parts 1 and 2. They had a 6 foot tall 47 in the room where the artifact that transports Simmons was kept. The last few minutes. Uh, I think that's an upcoming episode. Anyway, the the series alone, 2015, chronicled tra trained survival experts being left alone on an island, having to find their own food and water. The longest anyone was able to last was 87 days, or about 2,000. Yeah, 2,088 hours. In subsequent season, two contestants appeared together. The longest time was reduced to 75 days. And, yeah. The astronaut says his NASA mission through the monolith occurred in 2001. This would appear to be a clear allusion to the classic film 2001, A Space Odyssey. This is the episode with the fewest characters of the series. Also, this is the first episode to not feature Mac Hunter Bobby and Bobby since their first appearance in season two. Let's see, and... Um, yeah, someone did the math on the battery for the... Yeah, I... It's... Yeah, if you want to you know, you can look the episode up. I... Yeah. Um... Yeah, and the the thing with you know the the 
Um, let's see. After, yeah, Gemma says, everyone always said we could read each other's minds, Fitz, so I really need you to read mine right now. I'm alive, but I'm terribly alone and afraid, so I really need you to come and get me. I know you won't give up, so I won't either. Let's see, and yeah, Gemma insists there's always hope, presumably talking about Star Wars. And let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah. Will says, not on this planet. She says, then that's how we'll work together. I'll be the voice of hope. You'll be the voice of doom. We'll keep each other in check. Deal? I shake hands. And she says, see, it's working already. And he says, no, it's not. <laughs> 